What's up? Welcome back to Brojo Online. Today I'm going a little off topic compared to the usual shit I talk about, and we're going to be having a look at parenting. I'm a brand new parent myself. My baby's now eight months old, so I'm finally getting my head above water. And in raising a child, I was kind of disappointed by the mistruths that were presented to me, the misinformation I was given, and the inability for me to prepare properly because people weren't telling me the truth about having a kid. I want to make sure nobody else has to go through that. Now, let me get one thing clear right out of the gate. The upsides of having a kid, if you want one and you want to have a family, uh, beyond measure. I love her so much and it's such a joy every day to watch her develop and see her personality come through and have fun with her. She brings out a playful side of me that's kind of been dormant for a while. I got too serious for a while, I guess. I could go on and on and on about how good it is to be a dad and to be a parent. But today's video is not about that. Today's video is about the stuff I wish people had warned me about before having a kid. It wouldn't have changed my mind, but I would have been better prepared and suffered less. So I'm going to share some of that stuff with you guys today. One thing I have to get out of the way first is that not everyone goes through the same experience, not by a long shot. The range of parenting goes from very easy and fun all the time through to nightmarish want to kill yourself. And sometimes this can happen to a single person. They can go through this entire range depending on the development of the kid. But in general, from what I've noticed and talking finally, honestly, with other parents is that you generally find yourself anchored somewhere on the spectrum. So if you have a kid who sleeps really well and doesn't get sick and you've got lots of support, you're going to be on this easy end of the spectrum. Whereas if you've got like a colicky sick kid and you've got no support and your relationship's not doing well and you're financially struggling, you're going to be down this other end of the spectrum. So it depends. It all depends. And that's one of the first things that the information out there doesn't really cover very well is it gives you these kind of generalizations. Your baby should be this by now, and your baby will always do that, and so on. But actually, it really depends on you and your baby. So that's one of the first things out there, is the information out there is too generalized. It doesn't let you know what you're going to have to specifically do for your child, because it can't. So like I said, today we're going to focus on some of the, I don't know if it downsides is the right word for all of these points, but risks, threats, dangers, struggles issues that you're going to have to face if you want to have a kid uh, and again i'm kind of breaching my own rules by being general here but some of these things will apply to you some of them won't i just want you to be prepared in case they do first and foremost we've got to talk about before the child is born miscarriage one of society's dark secrets is how often miscarriage happens you don't hear about it very often people don't talk about it they're not posting about it on facebook about yeah, he had another miscarriage like they do when they have a kid, but it happens a lot. Uh, I don't know the statistics. I'm not going to go into the medical facts about this, but let, let it be known that there's a really good chance it will happen to you the first time. It might even happen to you multiple times before you have a kid. There are a lot of uh, couples struggling to have the children naturally, and they're looking for medical support because miscarriage is so common. But nobody fucking talks about it. Nobody talks about the risk of it. Nobody talks about how, you know, you're best not to announce the baby until three months have passed because anything could happen in those three months of pregnancy and so on. So I just want to put it out there. I want it, I want it to be normalized. Miscarriage happens a lot. It's very traumatic for the parents, but it's also very common. And maybe it wouldn't be so traumatic if we just recognize how common it is, that this is a pretty common experience for a woman to go through. Second one. You're going to be presented with a choice when it comes to the birth. There's going to be two things you're going to have to choose between uh, a natural birth, pushing the baby out, versus a C-section, and breastfeeding versus formula, and sometimes a combination of both. One of the things I want to point out is that there are pros and cons to both of these to the point where it's kind of equal. Whichever one you choose, you're going to have downsides to deal with, and it's kind of which downsides would you prefer? So, for example, when it comes to having the birth naturally, you are going to wreck your vagina, probably, unless you're lucky enough to have a small kid and it comes out quickly. But your first kid will probably physically change you permanently on the way out. Uh, 
and that will affect your sex life uh, at least in the short term possibly in the long term as well but you'll be able to bond with your baby straight away they can just put him or her right on your body and you can connect if you have a c-section you get to keep your pussy intact however you're not going to be able to bond with your baby right away and this can create some issues if you want to breastfeed and latch later on uh, you can sometimes get infected with the wound you get very hard to move around you can't lift things for a long time so it actually interferes with the early days of, of parenting and people don't talk about that very much so you have to figure out which one of those kind of downsides you are willing to face and would prefer but more importantly i think to talk about is breastfeeding there are reasons why a lot of women give up on breastfeeding i've heard multiple times now it's actually worse than giving birth pain wise uh, it certainly was for my wife and that's sounds like a pretty common experience especially for a first kid you have no idea how much breastfeeding is going to fucking hurt and create all sorts of hormonal issues now that doesn't mean that it's definitely worse than bottle feeding breastfeeding is scientifically speaking it's healthier for the baby just uh, and bottle feeding can increase the risk of reflux and create some other issues plus being able to whip a breast out anywhere anytime is pretty handy you can't like take a bottle warmer with you and all the ingredients all the time so pros and cons again but nobody tells you that breastfeeding hurts worse than giving birth i've never heard that before until after we had to go through it and then we started asking around and everyone's oh yeah i had to give up after a month it was too much so you got to be prepared for that i just <laughs> you got to get your head around it like pushing a baby out of your vagina isn't as bad as your first breastfeeding for a lot of women so you, you can imagine how bad that breastfeeding must be right how painful it must be one of the main points i think i should get out of the way early is information overwhelm there is so much out there it's very similar to the health industry the wide range of advice and the contradictions and the conflict in that advice you go on the internet looking for parenting advice you're going to constantly get polar opposite things being said and a lot of the stuff is going to have almost no connection with scientific research and it's just going to be old wives wisdom kind of thing it's going to be what mums think worked for their kid which is pretty much the worst source of information you can get about what to do with your particular child we had some uh, medical issues with our kid and ended up having at one point we had five different medical professionals involved with her we asked them all the same question we got five different answers so even the medical professionals those in the scientific community can't come to an agreement about the right way to do things and you just constantly get this sense anytime you talk to anyone every time you ask for advice anytime you do any research you get different answers from different people and it gives you the sense of i have no idea which one to go with and i don't have the answers for you either but to let you know that maybe other people don't know better than you do now there's practical stuff the best way to change an appy what to do about the you know the, the cord thing that comes out of the belly button and how to bathe the child and stuff there's practical stuff where you can get pretty consistent advice but like how to interact with your child when they should sleep how to put them to sleep you're actually probably just going to have to figure out what works for you and your kid and pretty much tell everyone else to go fuck themselves because their advice is not going to help you their advice is generally going to be this is what i think works with my kid and i say it that way because often they say this works with my kid and their kids are fucking mess so you're like well i wouldn't say that, that worked if your kid's like that and it didn't even work right like I, I remember one woman saying like oh every time my baby cries i just breastfeed her that calms her down so it sounds like a solution and then he asked well how often do you breastfeed her oh every half an hour 24 hours a day well that's not a fucking solution then is it i don't want that life so you really have to sort of back yourself that your natural instincts around parenting both for the guy and the girl are probably going to be a better resource than everybody else's ideas another one that will overwhelm you is false positivity from other parents this is really the key to this video is that other parents aren't fucking honest about how hard this is it's as simple as that they put on their makeup and their nice clothes and they go for a walk with the you know the baby in the buggy and you ask them how's it going they're oh, pretty well you know everything's going all right and you think that they're not lying 
when actually a vast majority of the time they're absolutely lying behind the scenes at home they are going through an absolute nightmare okay in fact i found generally the better the kind of front-facing presentation the more forced and kind of people pleasing that seems the worse it is behind the scenes but that's also mixed up with some people who are genuinely having a good easy time because some babies are really easy to work with and it's hard to know the difference but i've been investigating this pretty hard from parents all over the world you know i have a way of kind of getting people to open up to me and tell me the truth about things and what i'm seeing generally is that a vast majority of parents are secretly struggling way more than they let it no one on the outside their relationships are falling apart they don't know what they're doing with the kid they're sleep deprived they're financially and having problems but that's not what they tell anyone that's not what they show to the world and the number one thing that they seem to all have in common is they don't really know what the fuck they're doing when we look at it is like are you sure are you sure parents are really struggling that much look how many adults you know who complain about the way they were raised right whose parents got it wrong look at just look out there in the world and think how many parents are doing a less than ideal job the answer's got to be if you understand anything about psychology and the the prevalent rates of depression and anxiety and, and struggles that people are going through as teenagers and adults you'd have to come to the conclusion look a lot of parents are dropping the ball probably a majority of them are doing a less than adequate job of parenting so if you take that into account that isn't them being bad people it's them struggling so much they can't even do like the finer stuff when it comes to connecting with a kid helping them build confidence whatever they're just trying to survive and that often leads to you know like people who use the ferber method they just let their kid cry to sleep you know <laughs> the studies show that that is a very traumatic thing to do to a kid it wrecks your connection with them it looks like it works like yeah he's sleeping but what you don't realize is like yeah he's detaching from you permanently emotionally you know but they have to resort to this because they're at the end of their rope they they don't have the resources to do any better than this but you're not going to see that very few parents are going to be honest with you about what happens behind the scenes i think they have a kind of shame and guilt about not being strong enough without realizing that we do things wrong especially in the west when it comes to parenting because we only have one or two parents raise a kid that's fucking stupid a kid is way more work than two people okay especially if one of them is working really a, a, a child needs a whole tribe but very few people have a whole tribe to raise, raise a child with I'm surprised how many people don't even have support of grandparents and stuff like that I, that, that number is way higher we're we're in that category ourselves we have very little outside support it's just me and Lucy basically with a few little bits and pieces here and there but not enough and that's the story for a lot of people okay so a lot of people are struggling way more than they let on and if you just understand that and know that truth you're going to feel a lot less guilty about your own struggles which will reduce the pressure and stress you're feeling and open your mind to kind of support you might feel a bit ashamed getting like paying for a nanny or a babysitter or you know asking someone to cook meals for you understand that actually if you don't do that you're going to be a worse parent so do it for your kid put your shame away now one of the things that people generally are a bit honest about is sleep deprivation but they're not honest about how bad it is you've had a few nights bad sleep before in your life maybe you've had periods of having some sort of insomnia in your life or anxiety based sleep disorder so you think you know you think you know what you're getting into when you have a kid i'm telling you right now if you have a bad sleeper and a lot of kids struggle to sleep like even the best kids get up three times a night do you know what I mean but if you have a bad sleeper if you have a kid who wakes up six seven eight times a night and wakes you up and some of those times you've got to be up for an hour and a half trying to get the kid back to sleep if you have that for months and months and months without a break you have no idea how hard that is sleep deprivation you know I I heard one of my friends has a Navy SEAL as a friend, and he said the Navy SEAL uh, claimed that having the sleep deprivation, the sleep deprivation of having a kid was worse than Navy SEALs Hell Week and getting into the SEALs itself. You know, he said he would rather go through that than go again through the sleep deprivation he had from having a child. That's how bad it is. You know, our kid was a pretty rough sleeper. She's slowly getting on top of that, but 
six, seven times a night waking up with two or three of those times, or well, three or four of those times being feedings. The feedings take longer than you think they might. They require you to be fully awake. And if like in our case, if the mother has like physical issues, especially at the start, the guy's going to have to get up and do all the lifting and stuff like that. So both parents have to be fully awake. And when this goes on for months and months and months, you start losing your memory. You can't think properly. It's very hard to make decisions. You start becoming very timid around your decision making. Um, problem solving kind of goes out the window. You're way more irritable, way more likely to take things personally and get into arguments over little bullshit things. And you get, you just feel like you're kind of drowning, like you can't get ahead. You're just like trying to get through each day. You start developing anxiety about sleeping. Like if you're taking her for a nap and she's not going down, you start thinking, fuck, she's not going to sleep properly tonight. And that kind of wrecks the rest of your afternoon. And nobody talks about that level of sleep deprivation. They'll say, oh, no, you're going to struggle to sleep. But they don't really let you know how bad it is how your mental health and physical health are affected by it. it. It might be the worst experience you ever go through in your life. There's a really good chance, unless you've had some horrendous stuff happen to you in your childhood or whatever, that your baby not sleeping is going to be the worst thing that ever happens to you. So you've got to be prepared for that. And there are ways to like work around that if you're prepared for it. If you're not, you know, after a few months, you're going to be like, holy shit, I don't know if I can survive this. And yet you have to. And it might even go for years. Some kids, like, they just don't figure out sleeping for a very long time. And it's going to be further kicked in the teeth when other parents talk about how easy their kid sleeps, lies about how easy their kid sleeps, you know, and you're going to just feel like you're a failure when in reality, babies just struggle to sleep in general. <laughs> One of the weird things nobody told me about, back pain, severe back pain. It takes a while to get used to carrying a baby. They look light until you have to carry them for hours and hours on end in weird positions. And you have to rock them and bounce them to sleep sometimes. And you get to a point where you're like, oh my god, my spine really hurts. And you start developing all these weird other injuries if you're not prepared. You know, I was semi-prepared. I knew there was going to be some physical issues, uh, challenges having a kid. So I started doing all these exercises, like animal flow exercise and stuff to get used to like weird positions of getting up and picking things up and trying to like make my body as sort of mobile as possible. And I really recommend that because you're going to be put through the test physically, even if you're like a physically fit person, it's the awkwardness of some of the positions and the, um, absolute like grinding repetitive nature of some of the movements you have to do. You're going to be really at risk of injury. Um, so you need to be prepared for that. Emotional confusion. <laughs> That's going to be constant. But one of the weird ones is you're going to wonder whether or not you love your kid. Again, one of those ones that nobody talks about. Uh, there'll be moments, especially I think for the mother, where the hormones swing so wildly that you actually literally want to kill your child. And then you have huge guilt and shame about that because nobody talks about it and makes you realize this is fucking normal. And if you talk to any honest mother, she'll be like, oh, yeah, just last week I wanted to throw my kid out the window. And you'll realize that this is normal, as long as you don't act on it, right? Um, but it's the same, I think, in a different way for the guy. You know, for me, I was kind of like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, when the baby's just nothing but a baby, it's like having a pet puppy or something. It's kind of like, well, you know, I got nothing to talk to her about, like, you know, what sports are you into? Nothing, okay. Because you're not you're not used to connecting with a child, especially a child that does nothing but sleep and eat and make little noises, right? And some of you, especially, you know, most most guys I think are raised in emotionally fucked up ways. So they're not used to like unconditional love and, and sort of freely giving and so on. It takes a while to build up to it. It does come for a lot of us, most of us, I think. But there'll be times at the start where you're like, I'm not sure if I'm into this or, you know, one of the things I was wondering about is those guys who run out on their families when the baby's really young. I never got that. I was just like, oh my God, I'd never do that. And I still would never do that. But after having a kid, I now get why it happens. Like if you have a kid who's that much of a struggle to deal with physically and emotionally, and you don't really feel connected to the kid and you have problems with your partner and you're just like dying to have your life back. I can see how a weaker man might bail. I, I get it now. I'm, I'm not that uh, confused by it because it really is that hard. 
Uh, a lot of things that the guys don't talk about is within the first year of, of having a baby, a lot of guys get suicidal. They don't talk about it. They don't act on it necessarily, but they really get to the point where they just want it all to end because it's so hard. Again, nobody talks about that. So be prepared to want to die, basically. And, and if you are prepared for it, maybe it won't hurt you so much. You just be like, oh, yeah, that's that thing that Dan said. You know, you're going to want to kill yourself. Maybe I just got to get through this week and that feeling will go away. And it does for the most part, but you got to talk about it. you got to be honest with each other about the things that you're going through, all the darkness. The, the mother's got to say, you know, today I wanted to smother her with a pillow. I was actually like holding the pillow. And the dad's got to say, well, <laughs> it's funny you say that because I wanted to jump in front of a fucking bus yesterday. You know, you're not going to do it, but if you don't talk about it, the feelings will get bigger and then you're actually more likely to do it. There are people who follow through on this and they're probably the ones who don't talk about it. I'd say almost definitely. I think one of the biggest, most annoying things that happened was interference from outsiders. Depending on your culture, maybe, and your social circle, your family, the kind of the way they are. But in general, from what I hear, most people get a lot of judgment and a lot of unsolicited advice, a lot of being told how they should do things. And actually some people who actively interfere, like uh, the kind of people who will give your kid a treat when you said not to and things like that. It's amazing how much other people think they know what's best for you and your child and they try to force that on you and they try to worm their way into your life and, and you know, family uh, can be particularly rough with this, especially when it's not your family, it's your in-laws, so you don't even feel like you have a particular uh, obligation or loyalty to them in any way. And you see them doing something where your kids, you're like, I don't approve of that. But then, of course, like your partner is there daughter or their son and they can't quite set the boundary properly and you just feel like these people are in, infiltrating your life this happens a lot i found it happening with me um and you just get this urge to just swing a club around and just say fuck off please especially just the people making little judgment calls oh she should be doing this by now have you tried that you should do that this is what worked for my kid you're like hey i didn't fucking ask shut up don't be scared to set those boundaries by the way in fact, a short, sharp boundary will really uh, uh, go a long way. If you just do it like, hey, by the way, I don't want any advice on how to parent unless I ask for it. Okay, don't tell me what I should do with my kid. Fucking back off. One of those will set you straight for a good for a couple of months. But there are some people who won't respect a boundary like that. Some people just feel the need to control anything that they're remotely related to. Uh, and it can put a real pressure on your relationship with your partner if this is family interfering. So you've got to be prepared to like put the gates up. You, you will be amazed at the audacity of people to interfere. You'll just watch them going, I can't believe you're saying stuff like this. I can't believe you're doing this. This is my life. What the fuck are you doing? How do you have the balls to come into my life and do this? Well, it happens. People will surprise you. People you thought were all right are going to, you know, their dark side will come out. Postpartum mood disorders. I'm speaking mostly to the fathers at this point you're going to be basically emotionally almost unchanged by having a kid a lot of the time. Like, it's going to change you, don't get me wrong. You know, it'll make you more compassionate, it'll make you more loving, maybe more playful, it'll bring out some stress. But your personality is probably going to stay just about the same. Not so for your partner, okay? The mother of the child is going to be permanently changed. Now, again, the range, uh, I've interviewed a lot of dads about this, and the range is quite vast from like, oh, she just became a little bit more this through to she's completely lost her mind and it won't come back and everything in between. But this is, this is a really tough one. You get this postpartum period where like the hormones are happening, the girl's crying three times a day over nothing and angry at you for even though you've done nothing wrong, being really helpful. And most of the time you can take those hits and just go, it's just the fucking hormones, it's just a pregnancy thing or... Uh, after birth thing a few months of this and we're through and we're clear nope a few months and then you get the different thing and then another few months you get the other different thing and after a while from what i've talked to is guys who have kids that are four five ten years old they go yes yeah, she she didn't change back this this is who she is now and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just something to be prepared for if you think that your partner I know I'm talking like heterosexually, but this applies to anyone where one person's the mother and goes through the physical elements of being the mother. Your partner's going to be a different person after this. 
if you expect them to be the same person, you're going to be really struggling. If you expect them to be a different person and you're prepared for it and waiting to see what it is, maybe it won't be so bad. But they're going to be different. At a core functional personality-wise, they're going to be different in some way. Uh, and probably by your own judgment, they're just going to be a bit crazier than they were. It's as simple as that. I can't use more accurate language than that. That's, that's how it is. There's going to be a permanent change to your social life. From now on, you're socializing either with a kid or worrying about a kid that's not there. Socializing with a kid is... 100% different to any socializing you've done before. You know, we recently traveled to Italy and traveling with a kid versus traveling without are two completely different experiences. Traveling with a kid just means you're doing everything you were doing, but the background is different. But traveling without a kid is you have this whole new experience and adventure. Well, it's the same kind of with, with socializing. Socializing with a kid just means that you're going to be parenting while there's other people around and it's noisier. You're going to have snatches of conversation with people that are constantly interrupted by one or somebody else's kid. You're going to constantly have one eye looking to make sure they're not eating gravel or whatever. It's just a different experience entirely. And I recommend you either do it in a way that embraces it, which is like like the mothers who go for walks with their kids with their other mothers, you know, so the kids in the buggy just having a look around, they can actually talk. Uh, or you completely like have some... One of the parents stay home with the kid and the other one free to socialize without having to worry about the kid at all. But not halfway where you're sort of like half socializing, half parenting and you're really doing neither and you're not really present. I've had a few friends complain like, hey, once I had a kid, all my friends bailed and they're angry at their friends for doing that without sort of taking responsibility. Hey, socializing with you when your kid is around is awful. You, you don't even finish a sentence. You're not listening to me. This little thing that is, I've got no obligation towards is annoying me and wrecking my shit. Nobody wants to really deal with that, and nobody can really understand it and deal with that unless they're also a parent. So don't plan to socialize with your non-kid friends with your kid in that way because they're not going to enjoy it. It's not really socializing. It's more like watching you parent, which is dull and annoying. So find a way to socialize differently to that. If you're going to socialize with people who don't have kids, get someone else to take care of your kid while you do it. Don't take your kid with you until your kid's older and can handle it. Remember how you used to have plans and you'd like make a plan and then you'd do the plan and it would go to plan? Yeah, that's done now. That, that's, that doesn't happen anymore. Now that you've got a kid, you're going to have a plan and they're going to shit all over that, and you're going to have to adapt, and then they're going to make that even harder, and then they have to adapt, and then something else is going to go wrong, and you're just going to be constantly adapting to real life. Now again, there's a range here, depending on how easy and predictable the kid is. Some kids have the, like, they fall into a schedule with sleeping stuff. Some parents force their kids into a schedule. I don't recommend that, uh, but it happens. Whereas others, like our kid, every day is different. Even for a while there, the number of sleeps she had per day ranged anything from two to five. How are you supposed to plan when you don't know when they're going to sleep? You don't know when it's going to happen, how often it's going to happen, what kind of mood they're going to be in, what kind of mood you're going to be in. I mean, it's hard enough just to like have an appointment to go on, on time. You know, the amount of times we had to like wreck her sleep just to get to a doctor's appointment, I've lost count. And then you have to recover from that and that disrupts whatever briefly stable structure of a schedule you had and then just as you get things sorted they change every parent will actually tell you that once you ask them he's like okay it's all working well enjoy that for about 48 hours because then the kid's going to make some developmental leap or some regression and everything's gone you're wiped back to zero you're like, oh she's finally sleeping uh, but now she learned to sit up and that messed up her brain so now she's going to wake up screaming three nights in a row for no reason yeah shit like that so you just if you can just live with the idea of not having plans, having more like hopes, but being willing to let them die, it's actually going to be easier to handle than going and trying to like make plans happen in an environment where they just can't. Last couple of points. Firstly, financial surprises. Kids cost more than you think they're going to. So whatever budgeting you've done for the preparation of the child, and you should have done some, just double it. And you'll be probably closer to the accurate number. Uh, but that being said, you don't have to do this the real expensive way. Okay, kids grow out of clothes all the time. So why would you buy clothes brand new? You can get massive sacks of barely used clothing from somebody who's just finished having a kid for like $10 for like a year's worth of clothes. You know, 
you don't need to go and buy new toys. There's enough plastic in the world. Most of the time, they're just going to want to play with kitchen utensils anyway. So you don't have to waste heaps of money on toys. And you don't have to let other people buy them toys and so on. And actually, they need very little stimulation to develop their brain. And so on and so forth. So you can actually save a lot of money compared to what you're prepared to pay. But you just have to be willing to do things kind of second rate, knowing that it doesn't actually affect the kid in a negative way and it's the better option. But be prepared for this to cost way more than you thought. And last but not least, and probably a point that I'll make a separate piece of content on in the future, relationship issues. One of the best kept secrets of people having kids is it really puts a lot of strain on their relationship with their partner, even if that relationship was really good before that. Like I said, for a start, as you both change, I, I believe the mother will be more likely to change more than the father in terms of personality and beliefs and everything. But you're changing, which means you're no longer going to be in a relationship with the person you signed up with. You're going to be having to re-sign up with a different person. And it can probably still be right that a lot of the core of that person will probably be unchanged. But at the same time, having a kid's going to probably bring out the worst in both of you especially with sleep deprivation and things like having differences of opinion on what should be done with the child or feelings of unfairness around the workload, anything. If you're the kind of couple that can't talk about stuff like that really well and catch it early, you're going to struggle. And even if you're the kind of couple that can talk about it, you're going to find it hard to talk about. There's not good times. You know, there's been a number of times where I've had a conflict with Lucy and I'm like, well, it's 3 a.m. and we've been up all night. This isn't the time to have that conversation. But when? Tomorrow, we're busy all day. The day after that, we've got appointments. And you're going to actually struggle to have the kind of relationship-maintaining conversations that you've had in the past. So you really need to prepare for the relationship to take a lot of hits. And this is because of that stupid Western thing where just the two parents raise the kid. This wouldn't happen if you had a whole tribe of supporters. The number one tip I can give to any new parents is try to get as much support as you possibly can. Rope in as many people, pay people if you can or if you have to, to get as much free time together, as much time as needed to make sure you get your exercise in and make sure you can buy nutritious food and cook it and make sure you can talk to each other about issues on a daily basis. You know, anything, any help you can get to make that more likely to happen, it's going to go a long way because I have a theory that I've seen some evidence for but i have a bit of a theory hypothesis that having kids is actually the number one cause of divorce it's just a delayed cause right the relationship would have survived not having kids maybe certain darknesses would have been kept under the rug or maybe you know the niceness that they were treating each other with would have lasted longer but a kid's going to bring out whatever issues you got it's going to poke on your sore points your wounds your trauma all the worst stuff is going to come out and if you haven't already dealt with that or you're not a good couple when it comes to talking about that stuff and dealing with it uh i think the kid's gonna break you depending again on what type of kid you have so if you can be prepared for that maybe you don't have to suffer from it as much but overall the the message i just want to get across with this video is not to put people off having kids though we do have enough people on this planet so if you don't want to have kids that's awesome uh you know you're doing your bit for the environment but if you do want to have them i'm not trying to put you off just make sure you step into this knowing what's coming. It's like, otherwise it's like going on a picnic without an umbrella and it turns out it's going to be hailing, you know? Like you could have actually enjoyed the picnic if you just had a big umbrella. Well, it's the same with having a kid. You can enjoy it, but it's not all fun and games. A lot of it is very, very hard. And way harder than people let on, way harder than other parents let on. They don't tell you what's really happening because nobody really tells you what's really happening. Most people are just dishonest most of the time. So... I wanted to make sure you're not going into this blind like I did. Uh, and then that way, if you take what I'm saying and prepare for it, the hits won't be so hard. Hope that helps. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed that. Share the video around. And I'll see you all next time. Cheers.